Hello everyone. After having just finished The Moon Sliver, I wanted to come back and do a review on it. So this is an exploration horror game made by David, uh, something or other, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his last name, I'm sorry. It's quite a short game, it's about an hour long, it's meant to be played in one sitting, and there isn't even a save system, so you really are meant to play it in one sitting. And this is a game that really heavily depends upon its writing, more than gameplay. Writing is really what makes it interesting, and as such, it's it's really hard to talk about a, a very heavily story-focused game like this one without spoiling it, so I'm going to do my best. I'm, I need to so, show some of the writing, but I don't want to show too much of it. So, let's get into it. You're on this island. It's a rather small island. Water all around you. It's very dry, very dusty, very windy, some very bad weather going on, and... A lot of the buildings you see around you are just completely destroyed. Like this one here. Everything's just kind of falling apart. And you're trying to figure out what in the heck has happened? What's going on? And who are you? That's, an, that's actually a big question in the game is who are you? Who are you playing as? And the way you figure these things out, the way you learn more about the world is by... Well, basically two things mostly. By simply walking around, text will pop up, as you'll see in just a second, and also by examining things, text will pop up. So let's do that. Sometimes it pops up automatically as you go around, like this. As I walk into the ruins, there we go. So, let's go ahead and read this. We're old, Isa, said Abel, and we're getting older. We've been getting older since we were born, said Isa. She was always smiling. Abel never smiled. They reached the ruins and strolled leisurely through them toward the shoreline. Isa could remember when the old buildings still stood here, filled with families. So it's a bit of the writing. So in this case, it just pops up automatically as you walk, um, as you walk here. And it's kind of, it kind of awkwardly shows up, as you see. It shows up in these huge blackish bars that kind of fade in and out as you walk around. It's, it's quite an awkward way of delivering text. It definitely is. It's quite awkward but the text itself is really good. Now let's show some of the more uh, directed text where you have to actually click on stuff to find it out. Let's go into... Mm, let's go here. Throw my flashlight here. So this popped up automatically. I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us, said Ellie. Alright, but other things you have to click on, for example... Oh, you can, uh, your flashlight, by the way, has limited power, so you need to charge it up every once in a while. Alright, so in this case, you have to click on this to figure out what's going on here, to trigger the memory or whatnot. What is your problem with Isa? Daniel said, putting his book down. He was annoyed at being interrupted here. Let's look around for some more hotspots. Here we go. My problem is that she's a liar said Ellie angrily, fiddling with the knobs in the machine as she paced around, and that I have to keep explaining this to you over and over again. You don't know her like I know her. Exactly. You're not an impartial judge, he said. She keeps the chapel locked, and she's the only one with a key, said Ellie, leaning on the barrels and folding her arms. So you're saying she took it, he said. Okay, there we go. So you can see sometimes you have to click on stuff, and it's an interesting kind of mechanic, the way this works. Like, after you click on it, the text will automatically pop up when you get near it, so you don't have to click on it again. And then after you've clicked on everything, what happens is you end up trying to reconstruct the order of events in the text. So sometimes you'll click on stuff in the wrong order, and it's kind of jumbled up, and you're not quite sure how it's supposed to go together. So this is actually part of figuring out what's going on, is just, after clicking on it, putting it in the right order. So now, if you look at this, like, look at the books. What's your problem with Isa? Daniel said. Move over here. I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us. Like, okay, so the order would be, what is your problem with Isa? The next one would be, my problem is that she's a liar. And we're the next one. Yeah, so you're saying she took it. And then the next one would be, I'm saying that she knows more than she's telling us. So you gotta find the right order and you gotta piece it together. And it's a really interesting mechanic. 
Because it really, if it actually, it kind of forces you to understand, like really understand what the text is trying to say, because to piece it together in the right order, you really need to understand that before you can even do that. To understand like where the conversation is naturally going, to be able to piece it together. It's a, so it's a pretty cool mechanic for telling the story. It's kind of like a mini sort of detective little puzzle that you got going on in each location that you visit to put everything in the right order. And then of course you have the bigger puzzle of figuring out what all of this stuff means in the bigger context, like why is this place kind of destroyed? Who am I? What the hell is going on? What has gone on? Why does this place seem to be flooded? I mean, look at those uh, power poles out there. They're completely... <laughs> they're partially submerged. That's not normal. There's something wrong here. There's something very wrong with this island. And yeah, it's just well written. I mean, it's just well written. The characters are well fleshed out. I found it really fascinating to just read more about them and to figure out and put the pieces together slowly. Like, it feels like a nice detective story, sort of. Because you're basically acting as a detective. And it just comes to a really satisfying conclusion. I mean, it's just well written. I can't really say too much more about the writing without spoiling it. Yeah, it's damn well written. Uh, there are some light puzzle element elements too, by the way. Such as this one, for example. Gotta get the right order of these buttons to be able to go into here. Uh, it's a very light puzzle elements, though. Pretty easy to figure out as long as you just look at the environment and make sure you check everywhere. Which isn't too hard because it is quite a small island. I mean, if you look over here, like, that building's where I started. You can see the shoreline over there. And then the shoreline is right over here past these buildings. So, it's quite small. Quite easy to look everywhere. Now, another element I want to talk about with this game is the horror element. Because so far, I've just talked and showed the more exploration adventure kind of element. And a little bit of the puzzling, which is... It's quite light. It, the puzzling is very, very light. just want to mention that. It's not really a puzzle game. So the horror elements are surprisingly well done. They're actually really well done. To begin with, when it's just daylight like this, everything is pretty much... It, it feels safe. You know, you don't feel like a monster's watching you and coming after you or anything like that because it's daylight and everything's kind of normal. Even if everything is destroyed and lonely and melancholy and whatnot, but the horror element doesn't really show in the daytime. But the more you do and the more time that progresses, it will actually become later in the day, till it finally becomes nighttime. And the closer it is to nighttime, the more creepy everything gets. Not just because it's nighttime and you can't see as well, so now your flashlight is what you have to really rely upon to see anything. Not just because of that, but everything gets more extreme, and you start to feel more and more like something's watching you. And trust me, that's not a completely undeserved feeling to feel like something's watching you. Yes. So it has some horror elements, and they're really wonderfully done. They're wonderfully implemented. Because it's not, um, it's not like a cheap jump scare sort of thing. Trust me, it's not like Slender Man or something. It's actually really well done. It knows how to hold back. It knows how, it builds up the tension really slowly. Right? It doesn't just like throw jump scares at your face or something like that. You feel the tension growing with every passing minute as it gets darker and darker and things feel more and more wrong. And you feel more and more in danger and you feel feel more like checking every corner and looking around anytime you're in a dark area. Yeah, the creator of this game definitely knew how to hold back and how to pace the horror correctly. And it never at all felt cheap, which is quite rare. Like, I like horror games, but I don't like most horror games because most of them just feel really cheap. But this one didn't at all. I really like how the horror elements were implemented in here. It just feels great. Just really maturely uh, done, the horror. So yeah, there you go. This is a... It's a game that mostly relies upon the, uh, the mood and the atmosphere and the writing. It definitely has quite a few flaws. I mean, as you can obviously tell, it's not a very good looking game. It's really not very good looking at all. I mean, the grass doesn't look very good, texture resolution is quite low, everything's very simple looking. It's not very good looking. Um, the sound design is... it's quite good in many respects. Like the atmospherics of the wind and stuff like that, and the flashlight. Um, sounds quite good. 
and there's some very good music as well. There is one huge thing that's lacking about the sound design, however, and that's footstep sounds. I mean, I don't know why they're missing. It's a very massive, massive hole in the sound design, because this is an exploration game where most of what you do is walking around, and yet there's no footstep sounds. What the hell? It's weird, and it really... It makes it feel like I'm just a floating camera more than an actual person walking around because I don't have footstep sounds. It's a bit strange. And the way the text is given to you as you walk around is pretty clumsy. It does show up in these kind of awkward, massive, fading in and fading out black bars. Like this. It's like, oh, it's above me, it's below me. One's fading out quicker than the other one. It's like, what the hell is going on? It's a bit weird. So it's got quite a few flaws, but I feel like most of what it relies upon to be good, most of what's important about it is the writing and the mood of it, and it nails both of those. The writing is great, and the mood is perfectly realized, I think. Well, maybe not perfectly realized, but really well realized. Thanks to the good sound design in most of the things, like the wind and whatnot, feels like a dusty, desolate, dry, dead place, and how well implemented the horror stuff is. It's just a really moody and uh, well-written game. Yeah. That's a damn good game. I would highly recommend it. I really loved it. Alright, so this has been The Moon Sliver. You can grab it from Desora, as well as from uh, itch.io, or itch.io, whatever that site, however you're supposed to pronounce it. If, you're, if you've never seen that site, by the way, or you're scared of it and want to run away because it has a weird name, don't be. That's actually where I got this game from. I've used it a couple times, and it's actually a, a very good website. I actually prefer it over Desura, personally. And this game is also, by the way, on Steam Greenlight. So if you'd like to help the developer get this on Steam, I'm sure he would very much appreciate it. So I'll have links to all of that in the description. So, yeah, if you're in the mood for an exploration... Uh, exploration adventure game with some strong writing... and some good horror elements, then I would highly recommend giving it a go. Alright, thank you for watching.